It's Brenda Sue from Beastie Boutiques, and I'm back this week on Friday, like I promised, to show you some new jewelry ideas. And this week, we're going to make pretty jewelry. I like pretty jewelry, don't you? We're going to make two pretty necklaces, show you some new ideas, and then you'll just take it and run with it and make it your own. So come on over here so I can show you how. So guys, check it out. Isn't this lovely? Isn't she lovely? I love that song. Anyway, this necklace is lovely too. And it's really got a great vintage, like 1920s vibe going on. Real Downton Abbey-ish, you know? Which I'm all up into that. This is so easy to make, you guys won't believe it. So I put this one together already. So you could kind of see one that's finished. And it has um, check... Uh, little mica swirl beads in it, cabs in it, and um, it's got two sizes, some in ruby and some in the blue. Um, they're so beautiful. Right now, that's private stash stuff, but this is what I had to work with quick when I put this together. I will have some for you soon. However, there are going to be ways that you can improvise with that, and as we go along in this video, I'm going to tell you what you could do to make this your own. You do not have to have just the exact things. You can, you know, move things around a little bit. So this one's got the two little chains coming down. Very, very vintage style. Very, very cool. You just, All you do is you cut two small sections of Figaro chain, which is really, really good for counting off and making sure you got in the right place. And you just hook it up in between this. Super duper, nothing to it. Let's move on. Let's do the next one so you can see more of the process, okay? I'll put this over here so you don't get blinded by its beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being silly. Okay, so this one I want to do is going to go kind of like this. I glued this in already. You know I like these crazy, funky Czech Millie Fiori's. You know that. I love the Japanese Millie Fiori's. I like the Czech Millie Fiori's. I don't even like the Chinese Millie Fiori's. But this is the Czech one. And in my humble opinion, the Czechs are the best. Unless you buy the Venetian Millie Fiori's, which none of us can afford. Ha! Ah. So, check is good. We have this stone on the website. It's 25 by 18. So, I put it in this 1928 mount, which is lovely, lovely. We have lots of them. They just came back in stock. So, you'll find them in the Bisu by 1928 section. Okay, but I just took this little piece here, which is a brass stamping, and it's plated silverware silver plate at our site. And you'll find it in the just back in stock section or in the silverware silver plate section. It's not hard to find. Javi will step out the skew for you. Now, what I'm going to do is this. This is even simpler than this other one. We have these little side stations here. And I'm going to talk to you about them a little bit. But the way we're going to place them around is they're going to go around like this. We're not going to even have that other little thing sticking in the middle. We make it real simple and straightforward. All you got to do, put this stone in the mount, glue it in nice and good, the way I've taught you like how many times, and then connect it to here. Okay, that's done. Now you got to get these ready. So all you got to do is hook them up and set the stones. And this is not hard because we're using cab stones that are flat back. They're not itty bitty. It won't take much time at all okay so we're going to do that part first so we got this put aside already now what i want to do i think is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to hook them up you can do it either way however you want i have these little um four by six light gauge um ovals and i'm really liking them and to be honest with you i don't remember if i got these as a sample from a supplier or if we have these on the website but if we don't have them on the website maybe you have some in your stash or I'll get some more and I'll have them soon because they ship fast okay so anyway not to worry but I prefer them the little round ones if you're going to use little round ones you need to use four millimeter the tiny ones and the reason is is because they'll kind of stick up funny the way these are connected in between you ever notice that like you're doing something and you set it down on the counter and then the jump rings are all sticking way up and looks kind of weird I don't care for that. Maybe you don't, it doesn't bother you. It might not bother some people. I just really don't care for that. So I try to avoid that happening. And one of the ways that I can do that is by using the ovals or 
the really small ones, okay? And these holes are nice and big, so um, you're not gonna have trouble connecting them. Look how fast I did that. Alrighty, and I'm doing it with, you know, you, you gotta do it along with the curve. So this is the side down and the curved part is the side that's up, you know. Anyway, what's cool about this part is this part is made for us by 1928. But before it was made for us, it was made for them. And this was a key piece they used to make their porcelain roses collection, which a lot of people think of 1920 jewelry, they think of that pink rose jewelry, you know? Although there's so much more to that company than pink roses, but anyway. And they would put a little tiny pink rose in the middle and then some pearls around the edges. And I loved it because I bought it for, I actually bought it from them for my little nieces and they just went nuts over it. They just felt so big and grown up with that necklace on. I thought, you know, we could do so much with that. We could use that as a base for so many ideas. And so I had Mr. Bernie make me a bunch of them and now you guys can get them. We have them in deep stock on the website, both in this antique uh, silver color, what we call it, old silver. And we also have it in the bright, shiny, blingy gold. So there you go. So this is all hooked up and ready to go. I need to hook it up to that too. This is going to go so fast, you guys aren't going to believe it. All right, so now I'm hooking this to this. You guys, most of you have probably done projects like this before. This is not hard. But if you're new to jewelry making, you know, I don't want to act like, oh, you should know that already. You know, if it's new to you, then it's new to you. We all have to start somewhere. You know me, I like to get my jump rings cut shut real flush but you know what I do is if I'm doing it on here and I need to do it kind of quickly so we can get through our project um, so Javi can go home and have dinner and she's over here making the video for me <laughs> um, then I just uh, what was I saying see I made a joke and I forgot you shouldn't do that when you're making videos I'll remember it's okay but anyway, these little parts were made for us by 1928 Jewelry Company, and they hook together really well. And, and um, yeah, don't feel bad if you're new to jewelry making. Uh, I'm not putting you down when I say, oh, this is so simple. You know, but for you, it might be a little bit of a challenge, but here's the good news. It won't always be. And I like, you know, you'll get with it, and it'll be nothing. Pretty soon, you'll be putting stuff together like this faster than even I do. And I've been making jewelry for going on 35 years, so there. Um, I'm going to put also the back chains because obviously this isn't going to go all the way around your neck. If you wanted to, you could continue these all the way out. You could buy enough of them and just make it like a collar and go all the way up. But you'll spend a lot more money that way. And it's not necessary because nobody's going to see them when it's under your hair and the back of your neck anyway. You know, really. And for most people, it's not going to show. So I'm just going to put more Figaro chain. And what this measurement is, is five inches of Figaro chain on both sides. And when you get done with the clasp and all that, it'll bring you out to about 17 inches, 18 inches like that, which is comfortable for mo most people. But then I like to usually put an extender on. I had one cut to bring down here and put on, but I see I must have left it upstairs. So we won't be putting an extender on this one right now. But I did on the other, so I'll just pull that necklace over here and show it to you. And when I was saying about getting the... the um, jump rings flush you always want to get them good and tight but don't worry if you're making it you want to just get done and all that you don't know if it's quite tight what you do is you always go back when you finish check them all really good and then one big thing you can do I always say this is you can take a picture of it with your phone camera because when you do that, you will see every mistake you made. It is so glaringly bold. When you take a picture and look back at it, it's a good teacher for you. You know, if you're going to sell your jewelry, I always say, we got to, if you're selling it online, you got to take a picture of it anyway. But, you know, it's just good to take a quick picture and then you'll see if all your jump rings are looking right, if you've got something sticking out where it doesn't belong, something doesn't match up right, you have a crack in a stone and you didn't see it, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, okay, this thing is basically put together and done. I'm going to hook it up. Oh, and these swivels are awesome. We have them. They're a little hard to find, these nice swivels. Uh, there's lots of swivels out there, but they tend to be big and chunky and clunky. These are elegant and small. And see what this does? Lauren will show this on her Wednesday you program. you got to put it down a little put bit. Put it down a little bit here? Down here. Yes. Okay, thanks, Javi. Um, 
it turns. So like these are really great on a bracelet. It'll turn and very comfortable and they always hook up the right way because it'll turn with you. Now we have to set these stones. Other than that, we're done. How about that? So what did I choose for my stones for this? Well, I'll show you. I'm gonna use these little hibiscus beads as flowers. We have lots of them in lots of different colors on the website. They're check, they're on both sides. I use these a lot in my mosaic too. You know, a bead is not just a bead. A lot of times it can be a stone. In this case, it's a perfect one. So I'm gonna use one of these. And then these are check opaque red glass cabs. And I'm gonna use them in the middle here. And in the middle, let's see what, up here. I'm skipping one, because I'll show you why in a minute. And then on this one, I'm gonna put one of these in the middle, one of these in the middle. Yeah. And then I'll put a little stones framing it out. So I'm just gonna show it. Instead of telling you what I'm gonna do, you'll see as I go along. How about that? Is that smart? Yep. That's the way to do it. All right, so I'm going to start from, I'm going to put this stone here in the middle just because I can. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little bit of my E6000. That's what I use in case you guys uh, don't know what glue to get. I like E6000 for something like this. We don't have foil back stones. So we don't have to worry about, worry about foil being destroyed. So, um, you know, when you have foil on the back of your stones, it's better if you use hypo tube or a rhinestone setting type uh, glue. But for this, E is just fine. And I'm just gonna do this quite simply with my fingers. I'm just gonna dip this in one side, get it, got a good bit in, and then I'm gonna take it, I've got it on this one side of it here, and I'm just gonna slide it into position. And that way, it puts all this, the glue on the back. And I didn't get quite enough, so I'm gonna need to do a little bit more of that. I just was trying to not have glue out over the edges. We'll slide it into place, and that way the whole back of it will be coated nicely, and then just kind of pat it down. And I'm looking too, there's holes on this, so I want to have them in an inconspicuous place, and I think they are. They're so tiny anyway, you probably wouldn't see them. So that's my middle one that I'm going to put. You would have to do that, but that's what I like, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to put my center stones all around here. And since... Um, this doesn't take me real long to do. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue in everything first. You don't have to do it that way. If you think you're gonna be slow, you wanna change things around, try different stones, do it one section at a time, no problem. But since I know what I'm gonna do, because I planned it out already, I'm just gonna go ahead and put glue in all of them. A lot of times this is a, a fast and easy way to set stones. Just go ahead and get your glue everywhere you want it to be. So I'm gonna put my glue down in here. And I'm gonna be sure I get enough. This is what they do at 1928 Jewelry when they're set in stones. They do two ladies work in tandem. One puts glue in all the cavities for the stones and the other one places the stones in and checks them to make sure they're all in there. I'm just trying to be sure I don't get too much so I don't have a mess. You gotta get enough, but you don't wanna get too much. But when we're done, what I'll do is I'll go through and I will check all these again. I'm just trying to get them in place so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I got a little bit of a mess going here too. I always try to work as neatly as I possibly can because then I don't have all this cleanup at the end, which nobody likes. Nobody likes doing all that picking glue off of stuff and getting rid of glue and shreds and strands and stuff. Who needs that? I can't remember if I put any there, so maybe. My brain works in mysterious ways. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do this side first. And you have to work kind of quick when you put E6000 out. I, I'm working off of a Ziploc, guys. You can work off a piece of foil, whatever you want to do. I just, there's this one thing about um, E6000 that I don't like is it's, it, it's, it tends to like keep running out of the bottle, you know, and making a big glurpy mess. I hate that. So a lot of times I'll go ahead and I'll spread it out onto something and work off of a, you know, like a little mat. But yeah, just, and I'm going a little bit faster than I might want to do it, you know, to get it neat. So, um, 
you know, it might be a little messy in places, which I regret, but I'm just going to tell you for when you do it. Go slow and careful. There's You don't have to race. There's no time limit. Just, you know, do a good job. The more you do this, the better you'll get at it. Okay, so I'm going to put this red cab here, and I'll put a red cab here on the other one. There's a little like a leaf thing there that's flat. That's where in the porcelain roses line of jewelry you put a little seven millimeter rose. These stones are seven millimeter. The hibiscus flower is seven millimeter. So that's where you use it. And guess what? We have seven millimeter 1928 roses from the porcelain roses side line right at Bisa Boutiques on our site. We have a lot of 1928 stuff there. So if you love the look of their jewelry, come on over and see us because you can get the parts from us to make it your own. And not too many other people have them. They don't have the pewter at all. Okay, I'm the only one. So I'm going to put a little hibiscus flower on this one. So just kind of changing it up a little bit. Stagger, you know, one like this, one like this, one like that. That's good jewelry design. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I have these little um, foiled ruby kind of colored flat backs. These are five millimeter. So I'm going to place them in here. They're so easy to put in these sides because they have, oh, look, look what I did. Did you see that? How dumb was that? <laughs> no, we didn't see that. <laughs> oh, good. I just stuck my hand right down in this, um, this zip lock with the glue all over it. Okay, I'll clean that off as soon as we're done because it's not good to get it on your hands, but I can't wear gloves and do this. But anyway, Getting back to the little mount here. I'm putting it in a little, not this right here on the side. And it's easy to do because there are little prongy edges on it. And so you can guide it right into place pretty easy. She says as she struggles with it. Now, here it goes. Like I say, when I'm done, I'll check over all of these and make sure they're sitting in there just right so that I have a nice completed piece. You should always do that anyway. It's like proofreading. You know, you proofread what you write. At least you should. I proofread everything ever since I wrote my book, especially. Proofread everything. It's like proofreading your jewelry. And you go back and you check it. Did I get everything where it's supposed to be? Do I have glue hanging out? Did I connect everything good and my jump ring's flush? So how pretty is that? That's how it's going to look. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other side just to show you, and we'll make a finished piece. And I'm going to make some suggestions to you of other things that you can do in case you don't want to use these tight cabs or stones or, you know, you want to different, use a different mount, different connect or whatever. I'm going to make some suggestions to you. But if you like the 1928 parts that I'm using, if you like the, the 25 by 18 mount, if you like this Czech Milly Fiori stone, if you like the little hibiscus beads, we have those at Bisu Boutiques. And you can come and get them. And if you're new to us, um, and you haven't tried us out before, because once you do, you're gonna love us, believe me, we make sure you love us. <laughs> we take good care of you. Um, you can use a code, coupon code. There's a coupon box at the checkout, and you can use code New to be sue. N E W T O B S U E. All caps, no spaces. And that way you will get $5 off your first order of $35 or more. So that's kind of a nice little spiff there. And we have free US shipping when you spend $50. So that's kind of cool too. And if you join us at the Bisu Boutiques Creative Group at Facebook, which you might not know about, we have a wonderful community there that you can join. It's free. Um, you can participate. We have contests every week. People win stuff left and right. Um, we just have such a wonderful time. And we encourage and support each other, too, which is even better because we all need that. All artists need encouragement and support. So you can come and join us and that's when you will see what all the coupon deals are for the week and all the deals you can get at the website. And if you sign up to our newsletter, which is on the home page of our site, you can get them in that too. And it comes, I, I do send a newsletter rather frequently. You know, if you don't like to get stuff like that frequently, you don't want mine because they come two, three times a week. But 
I think they're worth looking at because it's not just an email blast. Oh, buy this. Oh, buy that. We talk all about it, how you can do it. I put video links in there to new things you can learn. I tell you about where stuff comes from, how it's made. I mean, just all kinds. There's a lot of information for people, especially if you're new to intermediate jewelry maker. If you're real advanced, you probably know this stuff already. But you might not because some people have not used vintage parts and stuff that much. That's my specialty is vintage look, assemblage, certain types of beading. You know, that is vintage style. So, anyway... That's my shtick. Okay, I've got one more i got to put glue into, and then I could put my stones in. Just got to make sure i got enough. I think this other one might be not quite enough. Okay. Enough for now. I can fix it up later if I need to. Okay, so I'm going to put this one here to match, because I want to match up my neckline, see? So this one side is the same as another, the other. In this case, you know, and sometimes you don't have to do that. Sometimes you can get a little asymmetrical with it and very inventive and unique. But in this one, I'm going to go for pretty, pretty standard type vintage look jewelry. So in that case, I just want to keep it very straightforward. So now I'm using my little five millimeter uh, pieces and getting them into the spot just right. They're all flat back. All these stones are flat backs. You want flat backs. Hope you heard that. I hope I spoke loud enough. You want flat backs for this job. Flat backs only. Unless you want to set all the little tiny stones. You might have noticed here before I set these. You might have noticed there's little depressions in there. That's because you can spend, you can set little tiny like 1.5 millimeter pearls down in there, little tiny chatons. If you want to do that, we have the equipment to do that at Visa Boutiques too. We have nice tweezers and we also have the pickup artist tool, which is incredible. As the best way, if you go back a few videos, you'll see how Javi set a whole bunch of stones just lickety split chatons using the pickup artist. Very, very easy to use. So, but, so you could do that if you want to get all intricate with it and sit there and do it, you know, you can do it. And it's not a bad exercise because you can teach yourself how to get good at it and fast like Javi is. But, um, that might be a little crooked, but I'll catch up with it later. Okay, I've got this one came off. I pulled it up with my finger. Let's see who this is. I don't know what's in it. Okay. Almost there, guys. Almost got it. Here's one more. The best thing to really help you is if when you drop the stone in, if you try to drop it flat down into it, don't like slide it in because of these little prongs and stuff. They'll get in your way and then you have to mess around with it to get it in place. So that's why I've had to mess around a little bit here because I've been getting it in like crooked to begin with. Okay, done. Voila! Voila! <laughs> Okay, it's done. Now, the only thing I would have done different here is, and I didn't because I forgot and left it upstairs, like a moo-ha-ha, -ha, um, <laughs> was I would have put a little red bead, like a four to six millimeter and a little tiny bead cap like I did here on this one, and I would have made an extender. I would have put a jump here, and I would have gone out another inch or two, and then hung this off the end so you could hook it either up here or at the end and I will show you what I mean on this piece a little bit better okay so let's slide this out of the way you have to let this set I would say the best thing to do is you want to let that set like overnight or, or 24 hours before you wear it I didn't quite do that I had that this on in the middle in the beginning of the program but technically you know I shouldn't wear this anywhere you gotta let the glue gas off and just leave it have time to really set up so here's this one of course, it has the rosettes. These are these are 1928. These are 1928 jewelry parts too. But what I'm talking about here at the end with the extender, and if you want to go back through my videos, there are videos about making your own necklace and extenders and stuff. And people have loved them. But what I do, you see, I've got an oval right here at the end of my five-inch piece, and I connected another like inch and a half here. So now I have options. I can connect it like where'd it go 
Old eyes, old eyes, I got old eyes. Here it is. Okay. So I could hook it there, and then that way it'll be like 17, 18 around my neck, which for me is about perfect for a shorter necklace. Um, or if you need a little bit more room, you can get it. You just go out to here and hook it in this last thing there, and then you've got more space. Clever, huh? In my opinion, all, all necklaces should be made that way. Unless it's a great big long one that you can just put over your neck. I just think all necklaces should be made that way. You should give people options. Here's my... just looking for it. Okay. Ah, uh, here. So once again, this is Figaro chain. And I love Figaro chain because you can count off. See, it's got the little links. You can just count it off. And they have, and they have like, um... Big size, petite size, little size. This is like a medium, you know. Um, you, know you can get whatever you want. We have several sizes at our website. So anyway, so that's how that one goes. Let me bring this back around so you can see this again. One more option you would have is, like I said, you could skip the chain going around the neck, and you could go ahead and do these connectors all the way up and around, but you'd have to get another five inches of them. So... You'd probably be looking at, you know, three or four more of them on each side. So that would add to the cost of your necklace. It's really not necessary. You could also do it to where you only do these two. And don't even do these. And then you could do tiny beaded chain or something going up around the edge to get a little bit more pop of color in it as you go up the neckline. Or just put chain on it. You know, if that's fine for you, you like it, that's fine. Do that. You know, but you can change it up. You could use the little tiny 7 millimeter porcelain roses and chatons, like I showed you. You could do little 1.5 millimeter pearls in the depressions if you want. That's up to you. Um, you can experiment. Javi mentioned to me, you know, I bet you if you poked around in the mosaic mix that we have for our mosaic type jewelry, you would find parts that you could put in there and it would make it really funky and fun. You'd be surprised what you can find that you can use in those mosaic mixes. So that's another thought. And other than that, I'm going to leave it up to your imagination because I know you have a good one. And I know you'll think of all kinds of great new ideas that you can use when you make a piece like this. So if you come up with something, why don't you come over and join us at the Bisa Boutique's Creative Group at Facebook and post your picture because you can post pictures over there and share with us if you're using Bisa Boutique's products. We like to see what you're doing with them. Everybody loves to share that. And we'd love to see what you made. It would be encouraging to us and we can encourage you and support you and embrace you as our fellow artist so that's pretty much what i have for you today i hope you enjoyed it feel free to leave any comments that you may have that are nice and kind in the comment section i do watch them and i do respond if you so if you have a question there on the video go ahead and leave it for me i'll answer you i'll tell you or come and join us at the group and you can ask me I'm there a lot. I'm very present there. You can get hold of me that way. Um, so, you know, leave me a comment. If you like the video, please leave me a like. And what's even better is when you subscribe because then you don't miss anything on this channel. You will always see it. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you'll enjoy this. I hope you'll pop on over to www.bsuboutiques.com and check us out. We have about 8,000 beautiful things there for making jewelry, a lot of which you will not find anywhere else. Have a great day, and we'll catch you next Friday. Yay!